Hi, I'm Dr. Zach Watkins, functional medicine practitioner and founder of the Livewell Clinic. And what I want to cover these next few minutes, these important minutes, is the foundations of why we at the clinic, why our doctors promote um, functional or food sensitivity testing. And the importance of this and how it relates to finding underlying causes of disease, symptoms, uh, things like that. Part of the functional medicine premise is to find underlying triggers that are therefore leading to the things we experience, say symptoms, uh, disease, can even be lack of symptoms, what we term kind of underlying inflammation. So. I want to get a few minutes of your time to explain the importance of these things and why we we at the clinic promote that. So first of all, I want to be clear that when it comes to food testing, testing how your body responds to these triggers that we call foods, um, food sensitivities, it's important to delineate and say it's food sensitivities, not necessarily food allergies. Food allergies is a different kind of thing. Uh, food allergies would be something where uh, let's say you eat a strawberry and your throat swells and it's kind of anaphylactic shock, uh, anaphylactic response. That is, uh, that is an allergy. Um, there is a form, another kind of uh, response that we call food intolerance. And food intolerance, the easiest things to think about would be, let's say lactose. You know, I'm lactose intolerant. Uh, basically has a lot to do with how your enzymes don't work correctly in the body to therefore cause symptoms such as gas and bloating. So food sensitivity is where we look at. So it's not really an allergy or an intolerance, but your body is more sensitive, meaning it's causing a response that we do not want. And a lot of times this can be hidden. Most of us think, well, I eat a list of foods and I feel fine, so therefore I must not have any issues with it. Well, you may not have intolerances or allergies, but you may have underlying sensitivities and this is why it's important for you to identify these because I feel from a functional medicine model, if you, don't under, if you don't understand the triggers that are happening to your body, it's hard to push back at it with nutrition um, and sure uh, brute force and, and crossing your fingers hoping that things will get well. I think this is a lot of reasons why people make it stuck in their health journey. You know, they're committed, they're doing a lot of good things, but they may not understand, they haven't seen maybe how foods are affecting them currently right now. And if they don't know that, I honestly feel like it's getting all the way almost up to the, to the top of the hill and then just slide back down, where we haven't truly uncovered some of these triggers that may be going on. So like I said, what we look at here in the clinic, what we talk about is, um, there's different parts of the immune system. Right, so think of a spoke of a wheel. There's things called IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, IgD. So all that basically is saying that what I wanted to basically get across from this is that most of us think, well, an allergy or an immune response is the immune response. Um, not necessarily true because we have about five different responses that go on in the body, five different uh, mediators that go on that help, help our body combat an immune system response. The IgE is the one that we think about with this anaphylactic allergy type thing. So some people may have had testing like skin prick testing or can even do blood draw. Usually immunologists or uh, allergists, excuse me, will usually only focus on this. What are the things that are gonna cause you some kind of big medical emergency that we need to be aware about, uh, be aware of? And I think that's important to know. The problem is from a functional medicine perspective, from a chronic long-term inflammation developing perspective, we need to know a lot of these other things, what we call delayed. So if this was immediate, let's say within 15 minutes response that you notice, the delayed could be anywhere from two hours to about five days. And you may not even feel anything, or you may. It may manifest in skin rashes or issues uh, in one person, but it also may manifest as uh, migraines in another. So again, very hard to understand and, and picture what we're uh, thinking about here. So what I wanna mention is 
what specifically we're looking at when it comes to food sensitivities and especially with with those who have uh, responses done through our, our clinic which I feel is extremely valuable so what I try to show people is I think many of you have heard of the term leaky gut uh, the GI tract um, it's always going to be leaky in a sense if you look at a microscopic level but we think of it as food comes in this tube called the gut and it should not leak through particles should not be creeping through uh, when you get this leaky gut scenario, it's almost like uh, your GI tract becoming a fishnet. Things start to sneak through that shouldn't be. Um, by the way, one of the biggest proponents of leaky gut leakiness is gluten. It's been shown that gluten can actually trigger response to make the gut more leaky, meaning those holes can get bigger, which is not good, and I'll show you why. So let's just say food particles come down come down um, the GI tract, travel along. They should be digested and what we call assimilated in the GI tract, meaning it can be broken down into chunks. Um, let's say it starts out like with these three little balls. Well, then it breaks down into, it breaks them apart, and now we have three separate particles. Well, that's good, because that's how the GI tract can absorb and get nutrients for our body and then get rid of waste out, out the back end. What can happen over time, and I'll get to that in a second as well, is these particles may not break down as well. So instead of breaking down in these smaller particles, um, they stay together. What happens is this causes an inflammation response on the gut lining that can start to break through. So these pieces of if you want to say food, proteins can sneak through the gut barrier. Not to mention bacteria, parasites, um, yeast, candida. And that's important that we don't want this because when it does that over time, our immune system is smart and it's good. Uh, there's a, depending on who you read, about 70 to 80% of our immune system is located in the GI tract. But because as this goes on, you get this immune response, what I draw is like little Y's. It's like a little guy holding his hands. What happens is they attach to these things that get through the net, if you will, and say, uh-uh, bodyguard, I'm gonna take care of you, I need to wrap you up and give you a hug, because these cannot get back in the body. But what happens over time is these can get back in the body. If I blow this up, it's looking like this. Here's the food. Here's the immune system marker, the antibodies, what we call it. Uh, if I can use green again, this is called an immune system complex. The immune system complex, when this binds together, this can lead to an inflammatory response in the body. And actually, this is what we measure in our in our clinic. Um, we're interested in this because let's say someone does have a leaky gut and things are sneaking through um, and, I'll and I'll, again I'll explain how that can happen but let's say this thing is sneaking through you may have and you've probably heard of this people say well I did a food sensitivity test somewhere and I have sensitivities to a hundred different foods right and that gets overwhelming and frustrating because people think they need to eliminate all of these foods um, because that's what the, the lab said. And when actually, when all these, those sensitivities that may be true, what we're interested here at our clinic is we wanna know what these immune complexes are. So we basically try to filter out all the noise is what I like to say. So someone may have, yes, let's say a hundred different foods their immune system right now is sensitive to, there may be only five to seven that actually trigger inflammation in the body. Inflammation is like a fire, and the more triggers you have to that, the more the fire rages. So yes, it's important to know all those other kind of sensitivities that are going on in the body, all the other hundreds, but it's not practical. So we want to identify the major ones, the major triggers, the immune complexes that are actually 
going to give off an immune response. They're going to get more gas on the fire, if you will. We want to focus our attention on that, um, and this is when we'll talk about eliminating foods from your diet, not forever, but just for a while, to basically spend time patching all those all those holes that the particles are getting through. So this is a very important thing. I find very, very valuable, and you should too, knowing that in your state of not even disease but health, are you progressing towards health or retracting? And I know even personally, I like to see what mine is doing because based off my health state and the stress uh, response and the immune response in the GI tract, I can be sensitive to multiple different foods which can keep triggering a response. Um, and I wanna know that because I can say, wait, I need to correct, a course correct, take some things out of my life for a little bit to help me strengthen that GI protection so that way I don't keep lighting the fire, if you will. So why does this get leaky? Uh, you know, People may wonder why, why does a GI tract get leaky in the first place? How does that happen? Why is that so important to me? There's medical literature. It's very fascinating, very cool, that talks about the relationship between cortisol, your stress hormone, and your GI tract. So cortisol is a stress hormone, and it's good because it can build up, it can help the body uh, repair. It can also be uh, not so good if it's produced in excess. And when it's produced in excess, it's been shown to have negative consequences. So I tell people, look, we live in a society where we're probably going to have increased cortisol at one time or another. I have videos in the past, you're welcome to, to, to search for, um, or even ask the clinic, we can show those to you, that when we go through a stress response in the body, you make more of this cortisol to combat, which is good. The problem is over time, if the stresses don't go away, this kind of poops out and this hormone drops and that's not good because now you're, you're, you're aging quicker, you're prone to more diseases, a risk of osteoporosis, risk of heart disease, things like that. Um, so, so when I say stresses, that can be not just I'm stressed at work, it can be, yes, mental, emotional stress, so family life, uh, relationships, uh, kids, um, uh, childbirth is, is a major stress on women. It's a very happy and wonderful thing, but it really stresses a woman out, um, the body. And a poor diet, you know, nu nutrition, lack of nutrients, uh, can be a stress in the body because it has the fuel to run and repair, that's a stress in the body. Chronic infections are a big one. Chronic infections that our body can harbor, your body is always trying to deal with it, that's a stressor. Uh, even simple things, going back to nutrition, like if, if women are, are, are borderline anemic, that can be a stress to the body as well. Uh, so these are the things we wanna look at here at the clinic to understand what's your stress response, and sometimes we have to dive in deeper uh, through other testing. But the more cortisol we make, stress hormone over time has been shown to decrease, I'll just do this. It's been shown to decrease your immunity in the GI tract. Namely, a, a protein, a molecule called secretory IgA, like the grocery store, IgA. So to make this simple, if you stick your finger in your nose, you'll notice it's kind of wet and moist. That is secretory IgA at its finest. It's in the mucous membrane, so vaginal tissue, the GI tract lining, nasal cavities, and it's there for a reason. It's protecting us. It's protecting the lining of the outside world to the inside. And this is a good, good thing. The problem is it's been shown that this stress hormone, due to those factors I mentioned, can lower um, this stress in the body, or can lower this, I'm sorry, secretory IgA. So basically you're lowering your body's protection uh, from foreign invaders. So if you go back to the GI tract, nice and healthy GI tract, the more this goes on, the more it's like poking holes in this GI tract so things can sneak through. That's pretty much what we see when there's like a leaky gut response going on. 
And when that leaky, uh, leaky gut response is going on, this is when it's like opening the floodgates to the foreign food invader invaders that can get through. And goes back to that response I just mentioned uh, previously about how it, it, it kicks up the immune system, those immune complexes. And again, they can manifest as itchy, rashy, acne skin to chronic migraines or joint pain. And that's why we want to identify what uniquely for you and for me are things in my world, specifically diet in this case, are triggering uh, inflammation, are lighting the fire. Because if this keeps going on, and we don't really necessarily feel this, it's not like, I, hey, I have leaky gut today. If you don't fix this, that's another stressor, and you keep going, going, and going. By the way, this response, decreased immune system, things like cancer, uh, things like autoimmune diseases, this all falls, falls into the same category. So. I hope you find value in this and I hope you find value in the lab that you get to see to look at what specific triggers in your life are causing this. Because once you identify this, I can guarantee you it's, it's a lot of the battle because you can take as many pills and vitamins and things like that that you want, which is good, it's still good. The problem is you may still be missing a few pieces that is not allowing you to get to that next level. And that's why I think uh, I know that identifying those triggers is key. And that's why here at the clinic, we use this specific lab that looks at those immune complexes. You know, which, which are the ones that are probably causing more of this inflammation and this fire that we really need to be aware of. So I hope you find value in this. I thank you for your time. Again, if there's always questions, please reach out to the clinic and we'll be sure to help you whatever that may be. Thanks. Thank you.